Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to today's class. If you're new, welcome. Thank you for joining. And if you've been before, then thank you for coming back. And Happy New Year to everybody. I thought since uh, many of us are having colder weather and we're past that season with trees and Christmas decorations and the lights aren't quite as bright, I thought maybe we could go in our pictures to somewhere tropical. That maybe it'll just give us a warm feeling and we can enjoy being at the beach, even if we can't go to the beach. For those of us that are unable or don't live near a beach, so we just have a couple more minutes. It's just 1.58 and I'd like to give anyone else a chance that's going to come on to attend. So you'll have your, your picture. You're seeing up on the board what it is we're going to do today. And you'll have your background already drawn if, if, you're, if you're able to see that. So we want a nine by, a six by nine inch piece of art paper, or if you're not using a watercolor art paper, a piece of Bristol board will work, a canvas will work, a piece of cardboard, or just regular paper. So we have the line drawn straight across. This is our horizon line. And then we have our beach line. So you may be using crayons, you may be using markers, you may be using acrylic paint, you may be using watercolor paint, you may be using um, art pencil crayons, whatever it is you're using, just, just um, follow along. And just like you, I will start with a blank canvas with the exception of my drawing. So again, we just have the, the horizon line straight from one side to the other, just a curvy line, which is one part of, of the land and our beach, which doesn't necessarily have to be straight, it doesn't have to be exact. This is your art. So I'd like you to make it as unique as you can for yourself. Can you move it a little to the left, please? How's that? The other left? My other left. Uh, a little towards your sweater. <laughs> okay, how's that? That's better, thank you. Okay, you are welcome. So again, for those who are joining, just coming on, this is the artwork we're going to create today. So I will put this up periodically throughout our art, but at this point to start, we're going to move it right out of the way. So this is, this is a, a this is not to be an artwork of perfection. This is practice. Please remember that this is just a piece of paper. We are here for practice. We're here to try something new that we haven't done before. Maybe you've done a different scene before similar to this. Maybe you haven't. But this is, this is not to put anyone in a state of great anticipation. This, this uh, one hour that we're together is to be relaxing. Um, I may remind you throughout the process, just to do some deep breathing, release the grip on your brush. If you hold your brush really tight, then your artwork won't be near as fluid. So we'll start, We'll start just by dipping, I've, I've got two glasses of water, just plain water. One I keep for mixing, just rinsing my brush off, and the other I keep just as clear water in case I wanna just put clear water on my canvas. So I'm going to start with a medium-sized brush, 
And I like an angle brush. That's just a personal preference. And I always have some paper towel on hand. So I'm going to dip my brush into water and then tap it off on the paper towel. And then I'm going to get water on the upper part of my canvas. Not too much water, just an above that line. So just a little bit of water. If you're using acrylic paint, just a very light bit of water. And then we're going to start with blue. So whatever blue you have, we're just going to put a few slashes of blue up near the top of our canvas. Just a few, very, very faint blue. So I'll put a little darker so you can see because it will go lighter over time. Watercolors will dry 20 to 30% lighter than when you put them on. But because it's wet up there, it's going to run a little bit. Now to leave that blue alone so that it doesn't run any further, I'm going to leave that alone. And I'm going to go into my yellow or my ochre. So if you don't have ochre and you want to make ochre, if you mix yellow and brown together, you will get ochre. So I want a bright color on my horizon line, just along that line. If I mix the blue and green together, I'll, or, or the, the blue and yellow together, I'll get green and I don't want green. So I'm, I'm staying away from that blue with my bright yellow. So I'm just gonna bring that all the way across. We're going to mix a few colors together. So now we will mix red and yellow together to make orange. So I want an orange color and I'm going to bring that across above my yellow. And we're going to mix another color. We're going to mix red and blue together to get a nice soft purple, like a lavender. So wherever we have a space, leaving, it's, it's okay if we leave a little bit of white in between, we're going to put that lavender color underneath the blue, and above the orange. So you can see we've got the yellow, then the orange, and then the purple, and then the blue. Now remember at the beginning I had said we will keep two water dishes. One will be clear water and one will be one, the other one for cleaning our brushes off. So we're going to dip into that clear water again and we're going to come back over and we're going to do a 
wash just with that clear water over all of our colors together, just with clear water. And we're just going to wash. And what that will do is soften any edges and bring those colors together. If you're using acrylic paint, you can dip your brush into the water and very lightly without even almost without touching just rub and you'll see your colors start to come together and if you're using a crayon if you use an eraser just a little eraser will start to blend your colors together So at this point, we should have a nice soft sky. We will come back and add some dark, but we want mine's that sky to real well. Pardon? Mine's not, mine's not blending. It's almost like I have stripes. Use more water. Yep, use some more water. That's no, okay. To to curl up. Yep, just dip in the water and just And if you find it's really hard, it's not moving, then dip in water with a little bit of paper towel. Just go on with it. Dip, just dip your paper towel into some water and just wring it out a little bit and just rub on your edges. There should be enough water to move that around. If we do this and you take off more color than you want to take off, we can put more color on with a second wash. But let's let this one dry. And we're going to move down below so we don't disturb any of that sky. So we're looking for a really soft brown. So let's start with ochre. We'll put ochre on our land first. So we're going to do all of our land just in a golden yellow color. Not bright yellow, but more of a, uh, ochre is a bit of a brown yellow. A brown yellow, a brownish yellow. And so it's a, it's a bit of, of land to cover. So we're going to go all of this at the bottom corner. Watercolor dries 20 to 30 percent lighter than when you put it on, so you may want to go back on and just touch up where it's fairly light. So you can see we're starting to get a little bit of 
of detail on here. Now we've got a little bit of land. We've got a nice soft sky. This will be water. We'll come to the water in a minute. Before we do that, we're going to now add brown. We want the darkest brown on the edges. So I'm going to switch from this angle brush to a smaller brush, just, just a, a rounded brush, a small rounded brush. This is a number three Curry's. And so with the dark brown, fairly heavy in pigment, not so much watered down. I'm going to mark the edges of my beach. Now I will leave a little spot here and there. I'm not going to completely fill in every, every spot. And that's up to you which ones you which spots you fill in and which ones you don't. That's up to you. This is a very unique project. You have the basis of the drawing, but this is your unique spot where you'll be able to relax and breathe deeply. Breathe the warmth of the ocean air. Just imagine yourself there. Can you please move it again to the left? Thank you. You're welcome. And also, Kathy. Um, yes. Oh, Kathy, just in case it helps people to know you, there's two screens that you're on. So there's one screen where the whole canvas is on just that screen. It's horizontal versus vertical. Okay. I wonder if I turn it. No, maybe not. Oh no, your phone is fine. I'm talking about the uh, the other the computer image has the whole canvas framed well. So if right. folks are having difficulty, there's two two versions there's, of your there's, canvas there's, that they can see. There's two of me, right? <laughs> right. Okay, so we've got those dark little spots on the sides periodically. If you have more than you like, we can we will lighten that up a little bit. We are going to use some gauche, some or some white. And I would like to tell you that when we do an acrylic or so when we do a painting in watercolor, if we use anything other than watercolor including the color white or gauche, it changes the name of what you would call your painting. We're we, we are not, if we're going to put white on it, we're not it, actually, if we were going to put it in an exhibition, you need to call it a mixed media picture. No, it's no longer a watercolor if you add white. So typically in watercolors, we leave white, in acrylics, we paint white on top. So that's the difference between the two. Uh, Kathy, I have a Chinese white um, yes, watercolor that, paint. Yes, yes. And when you use that Chinese white on any of your watercolor paintings, as soon as you put that on, it automatically changes your picture to be called uh, mixed media. Oh, I know there okay. is. It's, it's funny that they give us white and then they say you can't call it, they give us a watercolor white, but say if yeah. you use it, you can't call it a watercolor. Yeah, that's <laughs> whoever, the, whoever, whoever they are, right? Yeah, those people, whoever those, makes the rules. <laughs> those people on the committee that makes yeah. decisions for us, right? Right. <laughs> okay, so while that, while your, your ochre is just, it'll probably feel dry, but it might just be a little bit damp. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put brown on top of that, but not the deep brown that you put on the edges. Lighten that up, please. Just add some water, just dilute it, and we're just going to give it a soft look. I'm just brushing on lightly. If I miss a spot or leave some gaps, it's going to give that look of sand. 
So this is the effect that we're looking for. It's just a sandy beach. Now, if you were tropical, it might be a white beach. If you were in Prince Edward Island, it might be a red beach. In this case, we're going to make a sandy brownish toned beach. And if you have streaks and lines through it, that's perfectly acceptable because that gives the impression of sand. You know, I'm just going to deliberately carve a couple of little, a little spots out just by using a damp brush. Just carving out a few jutted edges. Sorry, what are you jutting out, Kat? I just was ju just jutting out a few little edges. I'm just using a brush with plain water and just pulling a few of the brown and just putting a little few little juts into the water. I'll just okay. I'll make them. A, I'll actually I'll I'll make them quite distinguished and then it will be clearer that people can see. You can see and anyone else. So so I'm using a brush with just plain water. And I'm just rubbing on the dark brown and pulling it and letting go. And it makes a nice little jut into the water. So I'll hold it closer and you can see those. So that's just almost a lifting off technique, but it's really just moving the paint just with clear water. So just in a few spots. Now we also want to take that brown, not necessarily dark, dark brown, but brown mixed with a little bit of water. And we want to be sure that that line at the top on our piece of land on the top left, that that line is also covered. We're going to put some trees there, but if your line is dark, like mine was for the diagram for you, but if yours isn't that dark, don't worry about it. But just, just ensure that that line is covered. So that's this line here at the top of the land on this side. Just in the event that your line is darker. Now I'm going to use a big sweeping brush. This one is a little bit larger. This is a little bit bigger. We're going to do some water. We want our water on the far right hand side coming towards the edge, towards the beach. We want it to be darker on the outside and lighter coming in. So we'll start with the dark and don't add paint, just blend in. 
and have it be lightest at the shoreline. This line at the very top, this horizon line, we will do that near the end. That will be a very dark blue. And we're going to do that so that it distinguishes between water and sky. So visually we'll be able to see. So we're going to start with the blue. When we do the shoreline, we want our waves to follow the shoreline. So your shoreline is this way and this way. So we're almost going to come to a V at this spot. So are you, are you just using water now? I, I wasn't even using water. I was using a plain brush just to demonstrate. So I'm not going to wet the whole canvas. I'm going to do wet on dry. So I'm using wet paint and putting it on dry paper. The top was wet on wet so that we got that nice soft look. I'm not so worried about in the body of water because we are going to do a couple of techniques in here. So I'm going to get my brush wet with water and dip into my blue. And then I'm going to paint my blue onto my paper. I'm, I can go right to that line. But as I come towards my, my beach, it's going to be lighter. And I do want to be sure that I flow the same way that the beach is. So it doesn't matter how this part goes on, but when I come towards my beach, my water flows this way. Now that I have my water on and my white is showing at my edges, I'm just going to use a brush with just water. And I'm going to pull that color into the shore. So I'm just using clear water so that I know it's going to be lighter at the shoreline. I'm going back over with a darker blue, the same blue, but it's just a little bit darker. So this is what watercolor is color on color. And I do want to take any that goes above that line. I want to take that off.
And again, I want to soften that coming into the shore. I just want to soften that. So take a deep breath. If you're holding your breath, take a deep breath in and out, in and out. And one more in, deep breath and out. Drop your shoulders down and relax. Just hold the brush lightly. If you're holding the brush tight, you're not going to get the same fluid motion with the water or the sky. So, and I just like, while you're still painting, we're going to come on to some more colors in the water and some in the sky and a reflection. But I'd just like to read to you from my May You Know Joy Meditations card that I picked up this morning from my little bucket. And today's message was, may you know nourishment. May you nourish your mind, your body, and your soul daily. They are your divine trinity. Nourish your fibers your ideas, and your values. Strengthening these will carry you further than you might dream possible. May you treat yourself with kindness and compassion and share your nourishment with those in need of it. They will come to you and you will both be nourished in the process. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was my message for today. And so now we're going to add a little bit of purple into our water. So we had purple at the beginning, sort of a lavender color, which was a mixture of blue and red. So if you need to make a little bit more, go ahead. And more blue than red, because we want it to be a purpley color. And we're going to dot a little bit of that here and there along the shoreline. So we're just going to dot a little bit of that purple. It will be a reflection of the sky as we move into the sky. And we're going to put some in some waves. So we're going to just do a few little wave motions, just coming towards the shore.
And once you have that on, just with a clear brush, just with clean water, we'll just go over the edges of those just to soften that up. Just to give it a little bit of flow, soften those edges just ever so lightly, almost not touching your paper at all. So they'll just blend right into the blue. And while we let that dry and cure, we can always move it, but while we let that dry so we don't disturb it, we're going to move into the palm tree area. So I'm using a green, I think it's called a forest green. I'm going to add a little bit of ochre or yellow to that green so I get almost an olive -y color. So I'm adding leaf green or for forest green and ochre or yellow. So I come up with an olive -y color. And we're going to make some palm trees on the edge of our land at the top on the left. So I'm just doing a palm tree stem or stalk. I'm just going to do three of them. I'll, I will come back and paint those brown or put some lines on them, but for now I'm going to do some palm leaves. And this is not the focal point of our picture, so they're sort of going to sit in the background. We, you may look at them, it's part of, part of our vision, but they don't need to be perfect. Just remember that palm trees, branches are heavy, so they tend to fall down towards the ground. They may go up, but then they start to come down. And these particular ones are on a point, so they probably get a lot of wind battering. And then I mentioned I was going to put a little bit of brown on the bottom. So just on their stems or their, their trunks, I'm just going to add a little bit of brown. And as in most trees, in most foli foliage growing, they need to be grounded. So we're just going to put a little bit of dirt or earth at the bottom of them. just so they don't look like they're just growing in the middle of the air. Just give them a little bit of grounding. And I'm going to give them some accompanying grasses. So just a few flicks of my brush, just for some grass, just a few flicks here and there, and maybe some on the ground surrounding it.
And then I'm just going to add it because I've got that that olive green. I'm just going to add a touch of the darkest green on some of the leaves. Just for a little bit extra definition. So again, just a reminder, just take a deep breath. Exhale, shoulders down, another deep breath. And relax, breathe out. This is just a piece of paper. It's just practice. There's no expectation for perfection. Certainly you can try this over and over again. And if you want to perfect it, then that's up to you. But this, at this point, this is practice. And an hour away from anything else that seems to have been on your mind lately. So we can just park that in the parking lot and you can come back and get that later. That's, that will always be there if you want to pick it up later. So we'll go into the purple again. So again, we'll mix that. That's the red and the blue. And add a little extra blue this time. We want it a little bit darker. So we're going to put some purple. We want some definite lines in the sky. So we're going to put them in this area. And again, this is your picture. So however many clouds you like, you want to put in there, however depth, whatever depth you want to make them. We're making a nice dark color in the sky. Then I'm going to duplicate that to some degree in the water. I want a little bit of that in the water as well. So see, they're not identical, but they've got that little bit of a zigzaggy pattern where you can see one is a reflection of the other. Um, do you have any tips for mixing the purple? Mine feels like it looks a bit muddy. Um, start over. Uh, clear your brush completely. You may have had some residual color in there that made it gray looking. So red, start with a fresh red and then add the blue. So I'm just looking for a piece of paper if I add. I've moved everything here.
If I take my red, and my blue, clear my brush completely, and I'm going to put the two together, I'm getting purple. Does that look purple? Yes. That's the, that's the two together. So that's a red and blue. Now we want to add a little bit more detail and depth to the water besides what we have there already. So let's go into the straight blue, into your darkest blue. And as I mentioned, we're going to do this horizon line in a dark blue. So I want this blue to be as straight as possible. I am working sideways, so bear with me, but I want this to be as straight as possible. Coming all the way across to the far left hand side. So this shows that there's a lot of depth between this water and my horizon. There's even more, it, the water goes even farther than we can see. Now I want to add a few waves in the water with the same blue. So I don't need so much water on my brush but I do want my waves to go the same way as my shoreline. And if something happens and I think, oh darn, I really, I don't want so much of that blue on there, I'm going to take my brush with clear water and I'm going to blend it back in. I'm just going to blend it in. So watercolor is very forgiving that way. When it's wet, we can move it around. Even actually when, when a painting is dry, we can still move it around. So see, I can lighten those lines and I can move them around a little bit. So there's a lot of flexibility in watercolor. And then also with a clean brush, just plain water, I want to give this water a little more movement. And by going back and forth, just gently through my reflection of the purple, I can give that look that the waters actually has a current and a bit of movement. I've asked you all to have a coin handy, a coin with ridges on the edge if you've got. In my case, I'm using a dime. And I'm going to paint with brown paint on the edge of my dime, just going around the circle. I'm just painting around the edge of my dime, just with brown paint. And I'm going to take that dime 
and I'm going to run it along the sand. I need a little bit more. Kathy, can you move your picture up a bit? Because I can't see what you're doing at the moment, please. Sure. Okay, thank so, you. So I'm, hi, Abby. <laughs> so I'm just going to run that dime along. And what I'm looking for is it will look like I rode my bike along the beach. So it's tire tracks on the sand. If you're finding that that's not working for you or it's too difficult, because it is a little bit tricky, you can use your brush and brown paint and just do some little dots that will look like tire tracks. And I've got three little seagulls over in the far right hand side. And I'm just it's a rule of one, three, or five odd numbers in painting. And the reason we do that is because our brain naturally can compute even numbers. But when we do an odd number, it makes our eye last a little bit longer on the picture. And that's one of the intents that you want to have with your art is to have people look a little bit longer just to enjoy. So I'm also going to put some little rocks in the water just on the edge, just some little brown rocks. What color are your seagulls? My seagulls are black. That's the only time I've used black in this picture. So we're still going to put some, uh, some uh, use some of the white or gauche in your picture. But what we're looking for in this picture is a triangle effect. So from the edge of the picture, from each edge of the picture, we're trying to make a triangle or a focal point. So our focal point is the purple in the sky. So by putting, just for interest sake, we put a few things around the outside and it keeps the eye moving around your picture. So if you're looking at your picture, from a distance, you'll see your sky, then your eye will move to points of interest. But it keeps going around till it comes to that focal point. And that's, that's the intent with our purple in the center. So with a plain or clean brush, and I'm going to use a bigger brush because I want a little bit more than then uh, I just don't want a little tiny dab. I want a good amount of this white gauche or Chinese white paint. If you don't have gauche or Chinese white paint and you have a watercolor white pencil, uh, pencil crayon, that will do the same thing. But I happen to have paint as well. So I'm just getting it wet with a clear brush, clean. I want it to stay white. So I may need to rinse it and go back over and over. And I'm just going to do underneath wherever there's blue, I'm going to put just a few little dots in the water wherever I've got my, my waves.
And I'm going to put a little bit in and around those rocks because that's where the water would naturally splash. I might have some white a little further out where the water is going to naturally start to bubble up. And then I'm going to put some on my shoreline. So that's okay that I put a little bit on my beach. It looks like that, that has bubbled up and come along the beach. I'm just going to put a couple little dots of purple on the side just to bring it together. All right, so so this is this is today's and this is the example. So there they are both side by side. There is our trip to the beach. <laughs> in our time of, of uh, low travel. Uh, hello, Kathy, this is Donna Jean. I'm wondering what color did you use for the rocks? I used brown. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for the class. Oh, you're welcome. So there's both side by side. They look pretty similar. It's difficult to do exactly the same every time, but the, the idea is, is for you to carry on and do, do a similar picture or something else. Hopefully you've, you've had some enjoyment out of today. Thank you so much for joining. You guys did a great job.